Lentil breeding is now capitalising on the past five years of creating depth in the gene pool and improving yields to now include a concerted effort to provide commercially targeted varieties to give growers cropping opportunities and a stronger industry overall. One of the challenges facing the lentil industry has been its roller coaster production levels. When the season's good like this one, more than 300,000 tonnes can be produced. In the worst dry years, that volume has fallen dramatically, dropping as low as 50,000 tonnes. And that lack of consistency is a problem when competing with our major export competitor, Canada. Well, last year they produced about 1.5 million tonnes, and Australia's produced roughly 300,000 tonnes, so uh, you can do the arithmetic on that. Food producer Ward McKenzie supplies 2,000 tonnes of lentil product to the domestic market and another 15,000 tonne is exported. If we don't have a farmer, well, Ward McKenzie's going to struggle and um, we're totally focused on getting as much money back to the farmer as possible. Um, it's difficult sometimes when you're competing with the likes of Canada because they sell cheap. 75% of Australia's lentils are exported as bulk product, but like Ward McKenzie, Australia's largest pulse processor, AMG, value adds to the 70,000 tonnes of lentils it splits and cleans annually. Most of it is exported to markets in the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. In certain countries uh, over time their preferences can change, like for instance Sri Lanka where now uh, they're wanting a large lentil and, and Canada at the moment has got the largest lentil. We need to get on top of that uh, in time so that we can supply the largest lentil. Having allowed for a range of seed sizes in the lentil varieties being bred, Pulse Breeding Australia has been able to quickly respond to market needs. Yeah, Jumbo's out in its first year of production this year. There was good demand for the seed, probably more demand than expected. Um, so that, that's going to be produced this year and next year. PBA Jumbo is a good example of how the lentil breeding program, partly funded by GRDC and through the cooperative effort of PBA and state agencies, is working with all sectors of the industry. Releasing varieties needed by processors to meet their customers' demands guarantees a market for growers to supply. The other uh, variety which will have an impact in that larger seed area will be PBA Blitz. And it's an early maturing type. Um, Jumbo's a medium maturing type. Blitz with its early maturity will be grown in the dry areas um, into the Mallee. And that will hopefully mean that we get earlier product into the processors as well. In the 90s, breeding focused on disease resistance. In the dry 2000s, reliability was emphasised. Now the need is to deliver varieties that will help provide consistent supply. There is one positive of having 10 years of drought and that gives you the opportunity to select genotypes which really do perform in the drought. So we, the genotypes now that we're selecting definitely perform better in dry years. And um, one thing we might have early maturing types which are really performing well in droughts and in, in the dry areas. But even the mid-season types that have been, been you know, progressed in the program do yield better in the droughts and have better seed quality. The success of the lentil breeding program is not down to genetics alone. Matching new releases with agronomic practices has been very important. Genetically we've doubled the height of pods. Um, with the right farming system we can double that height again. So that really means a four times increase in height, which really does make the difference in a very short crop between simple and difficult harvesting. Putting the new varieties through their paces in the paddock is the job of the research agronomist and matching the new releases with appropriate farming systems such as retained stubble and precision agriculture helps to get the best from the lentils. A lot of lentil varieties are susceptible to lodging so the standing residue provides um, a trellis um, which the crop can lean against particularly at harvest um, so it improves harvestability. But also, combined with that system, a lot of times farmers are using controlled traffic, so there's less trafficking on the paddock. Jason Brand's advice is to know what different varieties offer and how they fit your own farming system and management practices. If you don't want to have to manage disease, then you need to look at a variety, say, as nipper and sow it early. If you don't mind a bit higher disease risk and you want something that stands a bit taller, you might look at a variety like PBA Flash. So it's really being aware of the varieties, their fit um, and how to best manage them. If investing grower contributed R&D dollars into a lentil breeding program means getting the support of plant breeders, research agronomists, commercial seed producers and marketers, it would appear to be money well spent. 
and the process to provide varieties that will allow growers to consistently deliver quality lentils is working.